you ever been to Collinston, Louisiana before? No. Small town. What, like 300-something population? I guarantee you everybody there knows everybody else and their business and everything about them. On August the 27th, 2006, 67-year-old Maddie Williams was not answering her telephone, and that caused her children to call the police. Maddie Williams got the name Mother because she was like a mom to so many kids, let alone her 13 kids. She would give you anything she had. She didn't even have to know you. She would just help people. So when somebody like her gets murdered in a little town like that, it's a huge thing. When the sheriff's office arrived at Miss Maddie's house, her purse had been rifled through. There was blood spattered on the walls, and she was not at home. So she went missing, and there was like a huge town search for her. Just come on down. We found Maddie Williams' body. OK, they're on their way down there. Come on, please. She had been stabbed several times, and she had an unknown injury to her head. There has to be somebody in that town that knows more about what's going on than what we've ever heard. Mom wouldn't open the door for anybody. It has to be somebody she know. There's no way you're going to just let somebody kill your mom and you just sit back and watch. You're barking up the wrong tree, button. They ain't do that. Kelly and I are up to speed. We know the case history. We're here to look at this nearly seven-year-old case and hope that we can bring some closure to this family. Maybe there's just some little point that we can open that maybe would make a difference. I've tried hundreds and hundreds of cases, but the ones that give me the most are the ones like Miss Maddie, who's so beloved by everyone and who ends up getting violently murdered. We're determined to solve this case. Our goal this week is to talk to all the witnesses we possibly can and try to get to a point to where there is sufficient evidence to bring criminal charges against the people or person involved in killing Maddie Williams. It has been 16 years and still no answers. Police consider her killing a cold case. Years later, the case is still unsolved. There are so many cold cases out there just waiting to be solved. The crime scene ultimately tells the story of the murder. We want to bring justice to these victims. Hi. Terry. Terry. Yolanda McClary, nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hey, Terry, I'm Kelly. It's nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, Kelly. Finally. I'm happy to meet y'all. This has been bugging us for a long time. We could really use some help. I'd like to introduce you to Chief Randy Teppen hey, and hi. Sheriff Mike Tuck. Nice to meet y'all. We're glad to have y'all. Nice Thank y'all for coming. Nice to meet you. you know, I knew Miss Maddie all my life. She lived just right up the road from me. I used to be over at her house playing with her kids when I was little. What was the town like when it happened, her funeral and all that? Uh, it, was, it was sad, very sad. I'm just real concerned if something don't shake out at this point that this thing may, may lay cold indefinitely. I think the problem with this case is that initially the investigators focused too much on what they didn't have, the murder weapon, fingerprints, or a strong witness. Instead of focusing on what they do have, which are all these little pieces that if they developed them just a little bit further, could get them just to where they need to be. I want to see everything you have, because we want to download your brain into ours to make sure we know everything that you know. OK. Honestly, in a case like this, the more minds that work, the better. Johnny Bonds and Armando Perez have over 40 years combined of murder investigation experience, and they are masters of interrogation. They've studied the case, and if anyone can get people to give up key information, it's going to be them. Johnny Bonds. Terry White. Terry, nice to meet you. Glad to meet you, sir. Armando Perez, pleased to meet you, Terry. Terry White. Maddie Williams. She is what we call a totally innocent victim. I mean, she's just in her house minding her own business, and somebody comes in and kills her. I think in this case, you feel a little more driven to find the killers. We're assuming that the motive in this was robbery. I would agree with that. I agree with that, yeah. When you end up working cases like this, one where the victim's purse is lying on the floor with items from it scattered about, it's safe to say that it was probably a theft that resulted in murder. And I think also that there's a good possibility that there are going to be two suspects involved in this. Yeah, yeah I think that you have yeah, two different knives involved. Two. What actually killed her was two knife stabs to the side of her neck, cutting her two main arteries. Also, she had a lot of superficial cuts to her, but something hit her in the head, making very unusual marks. Not sure what that came from. OK, so why don't we start talking about the suspects? From the beginning, Terry, who were y'all focusing on? A guy named Stanley Mitchell had been seen driving around her house, sitting in his car across the street in the days preceding. Our second suspect is Freddie Miller. The night of this homicide, some people saw these two men together 
just a couple of miles down the road. Also, the police chief, he had a confidential informant that told him that Stanley Mitchell and Freddie Miller had been talking about robbing someone in just in the past few days before this crime. Renwick Jackson, suspect number three, had known the victim. Inside the crime scene on Miss Maddie's kitchen table was a work check pay stub made out to Renwick Jackson. Also, we had a statement that he had power washed his car. This is the Mitsubishi we're talking about. Right. That's so blatant. I mean, go you go well, in a three-year-old car and you go open it up and take take a power washer on the interior. Which makes him a pretty good suspect. Yeah. Moving forward, we have a number of things we need to figure out. How was Miss Maddie killed, and what was that mysterious wound on her head? We want to talk to the witnesses to see if they have any new information. And we want to look at our suspect list to see if there's anybody else we need to add. And finally, we want to see whether or not any of our evidence comes back with DNA on it. Well, I think the first thing we have to do is go meet the family. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. I do appreciate the, the family uh, members being here today. Miss Maddie has 13 kids. She has umpteen grandchildren. These are all the people that are hoping someday they can get answers to this stuff. They don't have any. By the end of this, what will we have learned new? I think you're going to have a lot more questions answered, even if we don't get to arrest somebody. I hope we do. We wouldn't be here if we didn't think we could, baby. OK? Where do y'all think the killers first confronted her? At the front door. She let them in. Mom wouldn't open the door for anybody. It had to be somebody she know. Y'all know who Renwick Jackson is, right? Uh-huh. Would she open it for Renwick? No. Yes. No. I say Mom would open the door for Renwick. Because she knew Renwick. Right. I have to dispute that theory okay. because she didn't trust him. Any reason for him to ever go to the house? No. What other thoughts about this that we're talking about right now? Yes, sir? Well, what I have to say is kind of touching, but, uh, we got a brother named John. Miss mm. Maddie's son, John, behaved suspiciously after her death, and he was called in for questioning. John would come over there sometime and want to borrow money, and if he didn't get it, he would get mad. He That's would... important. Oh, no, what's the worst he ever did to her? To my knowledge, he may have talked back. Did he ever hit her? He tried to one time. Yeah. Let me say this. John has respected Mom. Really? I think John probably got involved with some wrong people. Maybe, maybe Raymond might, might be one of them, and probably owed them some money. And John went to mom, probably tried to get the money. How many of y'all are thinking like Harold? She, she naturally opens the door. OK, let's just assume for one second that that's the truth. But at the point that somebody is murdering your mom, you're going to intervene. There's no way you're going to just let somebody kill your mom and you just sit back and watch. Yeah, if you're scared. And then see, I don't scared. see you not intervening. If you're There's scared. no way. You would. Even just thinking that your brother had something to do with it, Words can't describe how that feels, because that's your own flesh. I talked to John, and the last time I talked to him, he told me he was going in high and he didn't want to be found. How long ago did you talk to uh, him? About three weeks, I guess. After talking with the family, I think we need to look more carefully at John Williams as a suspect. Okay. All right, thank you all. <laughs> Living without resolution to my mom's cases, it's like a dark cloud that follows you everywhere you go. I've gotten married, I have a son, but there's still this dark cloud that I can't overcome it. So to have light shone on that place of darkness, that would mean the world to me. If you're working on a cold case in a big city, you can take your time going to the crime scene because word's not going to get out that you've reopened the case by going out there. If you're in a small town, the whole dynamic changes. And you only have a limited window where you can try and probe for new information. This is the house. Before we can determine who committed this crime, we have to determine what happened, where it happened, and how it happened. At this point, we don't know where she was killed. I mean, they took her out of the house, but why? And was she still alive when they left? Fortunately for us, the house is vacant. I'm thinking this is definitely your attack area. 
Since the fingerprints in this case are inconclusive, money was hidden in this closet. We're going to need to follow the blood trail from this crime scene to piece this together. This room had nothing in it, no blood drops, no nothing. Now, we didn't see any blood in here that I would tell. How much blood did the towel have? Not that blood. It's not that bloody. So they're kind of taking her this way. Yeah. Tell me what y'all are thinking. She of. left here alive. She left here alive and probably conscious. The stabbing in the neck, she would have been like a, a hose squirting water. That didn't happen at the scene. It had to happen somewhere else. We are in Collinston, Louisiana, investigating the murder of Maddie Williams, who was known and loved by all the people in this town as mother. This murder happened nearly seven years ago, and it's never been solved. And one of the first things we want to do is go to the crime scene and get a real live look at it to be able to appreciate better what might have happened that night. By what we have here on scene, there's a few scenarios that could happen by the, the different areas that have blood. So we're actually going to play out just a couple of different yeah. possibilities of what occurred here. So here we go. Wham, wham, I knock her down. You stay with her. So we got a lot of blood here. We got the towel here. They grab her purse, turn her purse inside out. Where's the rest of the money? Where is it? Because she doesn't have much on her. No. There's some blood drops as I'm holding my head. All right, the now, freezer's here. You reach out and you touch the freezer. I'm like, I come on, come on. I you drop drip blood. here, you drip here. You stagger over, you hit the sink. You're not here long, like, where's the money? Where's the money? Take you this way. This way. We go down the hallway. I see. Is it in here? All right, show me the money. Show me the money. He, he brings her in here. We've got blood on the floor and the wall here. All right, they come out of this room. There are footprints and blood down this hallway almost to the door. And then they stop. stop. These guys are thinking, what are we going to do with it? There's, there's some disruption on that table, stuff turned over, and this is where the pay stub was. So they take her out on the porch. There's more blood here, and there's more blood right here on the porch. They let her sit down right here. Somebody's getting the car, come on, and she falls against the house. She's getting up Just to the angle. coming up. To here. And then they put her in the car and go. They took Maddie's body to the dump site, I think, to buy themselves some time to cover their tracks. It's speculation. Unless somebody tells us exactly what happened, we can only have our theories and scenarios. Now that we know that the murder part did not happen at the home. It's only just a very short distance up this road. We are headed to the piece of property where Miss Maddie's body was found. This field is four miles from Miss Maddie's house. When she was brought here, she was still alive. I can't even imagine what went through her head those last moments that she was alive. So, Terry, at the time, this didn't exist, right? It was all brush. Through here was that tall grass in a big area. Stanley Mitchell's father and uncle were overseeing this property. Stanley Mitchell just lived how far up the road? Three-tenths of a mile from here. North of here. Right, OK. Over there in that in that area, she was right at the edge of uh -huh. the woods. When you got here and saw the body, she was laying face down. Is that she correct? She was laying face down. If she was stabbed there and fell down, we'd have more blood on her left side. Do you remember how much blood was under her body when they rolled her? What I remember was a pretty good-sized spot. There's enough blood to her body that the fatal wounds could have been delivered right there when they found the body. I agree with you. We got our facts together to be able to answer the what, where, and how. But now we need to concentrate on the who. We have received information that Stanley Mitchell was in jail some time ago, and he talked with the inmate about some facts regarding this case. We're going to try to talk to the inmate and see what kind of information he might have. During your incarceration, did you have an opportunity to talk to Stanley Mitchell about the homicide of just Maddie Williams? Yes, sir, I did. He was trying to fight him off or whatever, and he hit her. Did he say where he hit her or with what or anything? He hit her with a brick. Did he say where? 
In the head. Did he say where he got the brick from or anything? On the side of the house. On the side of the house. OK. When he says that Miss Maddie was hit with a brick, I'm thinking, I need to look at the crime scene video to see if maybe something was overlooked. You did the right thing. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And looking back at some of the video that was taken of the crime scene on top of a trash can is a red brick. Hearing from our confidential informant that Stanley hit Miss Maddie in the head with a brick, and after reviewing the tape and seeing that there was a brick on scene, I think that we need to go back to the crime scene. There was a large green garbage can that sat right here, and uh, the brick was sitting on top of the garbage can. Is this it? And that that's looks like what, the exact same brick. That's what we were just saying. Is, is this the brick? Did like they it. maybe look, just look set it? Look at the yeah. notch coming that's through. Right. I think yeah. you think there's any chance of finding anything on it seven years later at, when it's been outside? Well, you never know. But the thing about it is, man, it looks identical to the it one. It looks that, identical yeah, to, the to the one the in the picture. Yeah, would they throw it away? They wouldn't know to. They wouldn't know to throw right. it away. I'm just looking. I'm like, that's impossible. Here, in plain day, is the brick. What are the chances of that happening? Oh, my god. Yeah, like yeah buddy. <laughs> We finished examining the crime scene, so now our focus is going to shift to interviewing as many witnesses as we can possibly find. Hello. How you doing? Okay. I'm doing fine. My name's Johnny Bonds. There were two or three people that we wanted to talk to again, and one of them was our suspect, Renwick Jackson's sister. And she supposedly is the one who told the police about this car washing incident. Tell me what happened that was so unusual about that car. I'm talking about the car being power washed. Okay. So he said he went to take his balls. Him and his boss was finna go to lunch or something, and the car was so filthy, so he told me I was at work. He say, you gonna help me clean up? I'm thinking, we gonna just wash the car. And got ready to wash the car, and then he got the skin in the inside, and it tripped me out. I'm like, oh my God, what you doing that for? I said, you gonna ruin mama car. When he's in there, was he just doing the seats, or was he doing everything? He just crazy doing it. The ceiling and, and All that everything. All I know is and then I say, forget this. No, no, I, I ain't doing it. Have you ever talked to Renwick about this murder case? Well, we was washing the car. And I say, what was going on? Do you want to like that? I say, you act like you done killed that lady. Do you want to like that? Yeah. She said, I ain't killed nobody. I don't know. So you had your suspicions? Well, I think you want to do all that. Renwick Jackson, he's power washing a car to do what? Get rid of the evidence in it. Get rid of any blood or anything else. So my strongest suspect right now would be Ren McJackson. This is our brick from the front porch. Now that I have this brick in my hand after being at the crime scene yesterday, I need to know, is this going to match up to the wound at all? What I want to do is actually trace pieces and parts of this brick mm -hmm. that look like maybe if hit just with uh, in the right angle with this, could it make that impact wound on her head? So now let's just do the same thing, because remember that V that she has on the side of her head? I did pretty well in kindergarten with, with this, so maybe I'll be all right. It's <laughs> even more funky is how this comes out and then goes back up. Well, this comes out and then goes back up. Look at this. <laughs> For what we're doing, it's For very close. For what we're doing, that is very close. I'd, I'd sure bet my money on that brick. Oh, yeah. You're, you're going to send this off to the lab, right? Right. See if there is any, any blood that's still left in this brick that would go back to her. Are you excited? Are you kidding? I didn't even sleep all night last night. <laughs> all those pieces of evidence that we sent off to be looked at, 
are coming back today with an answer from the lab. I just want one piece to come back. We're just one of the suspects. At least that nails the one, and then maybe that person would roll knowing they're done, but they ain't gonna take this by themselves, hopefully. You know what would be beautiful? If something comes back to Freddy. I know, since he's the one that we have the least yeah. on right now. And still frustrating is the fact that we can't decide on John, you know, to tell the family the answer to their biggest question. Did John, was he involved in this too? This may be the office right here. A rental told us that he was at work the day Miss Mandy's body was found. We're going to talk to him about that and also see what information he has about his car. You remember he was driving his mother's uh, Mitsubishi Galant. I recall him driving. Right. Did you ever ride in that car? No. Him and his boss was going to go and lunch or something, and the car was so fearful. Did you ever make any comments about the condition of the car or say anything about it being dirty? Not that I can recall. Ms. Mandy Williams' body was discovered on August the 28th. And one of the things I want to clear up the best we can is whether or not Rimwick was at work for you that day. It appears we didn't do anything, and we had put Rimwick on like a salary. So he got a check for that week, but he didn't. we didn't have any timesheets for that week. OK. What evidence was tested? The original things that, that were sent, we have her purse, her blue jean dress, her shoes. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sheriff. I, uh, I just got off the phone with the crime lab. Oh, man. Nothing on our suspects. All profiles are consistent with Miss Williams, is their exact wording. Dang. That's a lot of pieces. <sighs> that hurts. Y'all perk up, man. In all these cold cases, how many times has DNA been the clincher? For me, never. You know, we used to clear cases before there was DNA. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Every time I hear somebody go, well, it's a circumstantial case. Like, it's a weak case. It makes me crazy. I'm like, circumstantial evidence cases are beautiful. Circumstance means the truth. And all these little bitty truths, when you add them all up together, make for a very strong case. Looking at our suspect board, we still have a strong case against Stanley and Renwick, yeah, not yeah, on Freddy. No, no, I was hoping we'd find some DNA for Freddy. Me too. Yeah. Let's go to work. All right, let's all go right, to work. We brought in Keontae, who is Renwick Jackson's son. The local guys have known Keontae forever. They have questioned him about this case forever. Their opinion was he's a hardened kid on the streets who is not going to tell you any more than he already has. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court or other proceedings. We really wanted to talk to him because at one point, when Renwick was interviewed years ago, they asked, how did your paycheck stuff in an envelope end up in Miss Maddie's house? You know that his paycheck stub was found in her house? Yeah, that's something new to me right there. OK, and then you're going to have another surprise here. The reason he read you your rights is because your, your father, he said that maybe my son, Keontae, put that there because he's mad at me because I don't like his friends. <laughs> and that you were trying to set him up. That you're trying to set him up on this murder. No, I had nothing, nothing to do with that, and I ain't put it on him. You know your dad's a prime suspect in this murder. Yeah, I really know. Do you think he did? Yeah. You do think he did? Yeah. OK. Johnny talked to him respectfully, like a man, and gave him the opportunity to tell for the first time what he knew. And I think that when Johnny went in there with that new approach, we saw a new Keontae. And when he was talking, I started feeling good about the case. Who else do you think was with him? He didn't do it by himself. And I know Stanley Mitchell for sure knows about that spot. You know John Williams? John? Yeah. I think the boys did it, and uh, they probably just threatened John. Talking about your dad and Stanley. 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 They could have got him and went to his mama house. He said something that we have suggested is that John was kind of duped into going over there, and, and he said that John may be afraid. They might have scared him. So at the end of all of it, where, where do y'all think we stand right now on starting our probable cause against Renwick and Stanley? I think it's good. I think you have enough. Yeah. You? Even yes. without it. You? I think it's good. You? You? Oh, yeah. All right, so let's, let's quit for the day, and then we can start um, typing in the morning. OK, all right. Okay.
In order to arrest somebody for a felony offense of murder, you have to have what's called probable cause. It's a higher standard than 50-50, which is more likely than not. It is not beyond a reasonable doubt, which is what you need to convict somebody. It's somewhere in between. We had enough probable cause to type up warrants for Renwick Jackson and for Stanley Mitchell. Stanley Mitchell was seen watching Miss Maddie's house in the days and the week preceding the murder. And we know that Stanley Mitchell worked on the property where her body was found. You have this confidential informant saying Stanley Mitchell killed that old lady in Collinston with a brick. Did he say where he got the brick from? From Sam Seeing that brick that is consistent with this curved kind of injury is corroborating evidence of what the CI told us. Against Renwick Jackson, we have the fact that he was known to hang around with Stanley Mitchell, that during the days following Miss Maddie's murder, he had gone and power washed his car. He's just crazy for me. The ceiling. His paycheck stub was found in Miss Maddie's house. And finally, Renwick's boss confirmed that he lied about being at work the day he said he was when Miss Maddie was found. We didn't have any time sheets for that week. While we may not have enough on Freddie Miller or John Williams, I feel confident that there's enough evidence against Renwick Jackson and Stanley Mitchell for the DA to feel justified in issuing a warrant for their arrest. I spoke with the district attorney's office, and at this point, they uh, do not feel comfortable in uh, issuing us an arrest warrant. They want us just to continue working on it. I think they'll agree there's probable cause, but he's looking further down the road to a trial. You know, if we get a not guilty, then it, the door's closed. You know, I don't know at this point, is it, is, is it worth trying to talk to the uh, suspects? Well, I mean, we can't bluff Stanley Mitchell and Renwick with anything. Uh, if we tell them anything, it's got to be something for sure that we know. Wait, why can't you bring them in and hit them with the brick? Hit him with the, I know where you killed her. The brick, for sure. Well, you wouldn't be lying to him if you told him that we also have that brick. The DA didn't think we had enough probable cause to arrest somebody, so we can't force anybody to talk to us. They have to do it voluntarily. We're going to do Stanley first, Yep. and we're going to bring in Renwick, and Randy can find Stanley for us real quickly. You ready? Y'all go. What's going on, Dan? Yeah, we need to talk to him. Now, Stanley must think he's got it all figured out because he came down here to talk to us voluntarily in 30 minutes. They're going in. Stanley Mitchell is a top suspect in the murder of Maddie Williams. He's agreed to talk to us probably because in seven years, no one's been able to break him. But this time, we're armed with new information about the brick he used to hit Miss Maddie. We'll see if that gets him talking to Johnny. What I want you to do is be honest. Yeah. And I'm not going to try to bluff you. You can't, because I ain't did that thing. Well, you can't. You know what I'm I think about? you did. What you think I did? Yeah. What you think I did? I think you killed Maddie Williams. Yeah, cut it out. Don't, don't do that. We know that there's more than one person did this. You're barking up the wrong tree, partner. Well, they ain't do that. That's the only God truth, man. I, did not, I would not hurt them, nobody old, period. No, I not. love old people to the fullest. I hate old people. He wasn't going to give an inch. So what I did was tell him what we knew. We know about the brick, the one that we have, and we matched it up, and we know it's the brick that was used to hit her in the head. Wait, that, that's the brick, y'all. Why y'all ain't been get the brick and took it to the lab, man? Take it you to the lab. The only thing I'm doing this for is to prove to you I ain't making shit up. Okay, well, y'all, man, you should have been did that. Man. Why you bother me then? Get the brick and Stanley Mitchell what? is, um, he's pretty good. I listened to him, and if I didn't know what I know, I could see where somebody would believe what he had to say, you know. And the frustrating thing is you have to really let him go. I mean, he came in voluntarily. He's not under arrest. When we were done with him, we had to let him go. He's hard as a brick wall, and that, that's what I told you from beginning. He's going to be the hard one. Renwood, I, on the other hand, is going to be just a little bit softer. Y'all two are going. Okay, okay. okay. I'm going to be back at it. How come I always got to be good? <laughs> you want to be back at it? No. Nope. OK. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see you right over now. This was it. Renwick Jackson is our last shot to do something with the case. The DA doesn't think we have enough. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions to have that lawyer with during questioning. Our last avenue to get there is Renwick Jackson. You're a suspect. You know that. Well, I hope you get to the truth. I'm trying to figure out why your pay stub was at her house. 
I don't know how my check stuff got there. I think someone got my check stuff. I know how all this started. Rumors and talk. The guy working for in Monroe, Mr. Gary, he say, uh, why you don't clean this car up? So uh, Mr. Fontana told you you need to clean your car? He just said, it's too good a car. Why it's so nasty? Did he actually get in the car? How did he know that? He was in the car. Mr. Me, Fontana was in the car? Me, him, and his brother. I went and talked to Mr. Fontana. He told me he has never rode in that car. Not true. We also, while we were there, we looked at the work records. Doesn't show you worked at all that week. Johnny just kind of lays it out with him. He's like, look, this is your story, and that's bullshit, and you know it is. So he kind of hits him up for a little bit longer and then brings some pictures in to show him. I'll show you something to be really a surprise. And you know, you can tell it, it shakes Renwick up for a minute. It shakes him up. That's the brick she's hitting the head with. My brick ain't on that brick. How do you know? I know it's not. Did you have gloves on? I know it's not on that brick. No, because some, somebody else had that brick in their hand. We know who it was. We, we know, know you we, were there. We know, we know it was your car. You're in a shit storm, buddy. You're a pretty sharp guy. You're a good talker, but you ain't gonna beat this. Yeah, pretty much. I'm feeling sick to my stomach because if Renwick Jackson doesn't talk, then we're done. There's nobody else left to talk to. There's nothing left to do. There's nothing left to check on. There's nothing left to test. We're done. I don't think I'm effective anymore. Is there anything y'all could think of we haven't covered? Uh, I'd like to make a stamp in it if we get through. Okay, all right. Johnny Bonds was very aggressive with Renwick. And Renwick was upset. When we work homicides, my role is to go in there and be the nice guy. Are you ready? Sure, go sweet. I don't want to push Renwick at the edge because if he gets to the point and said, hey, I want my attorney, that's it. You have to shut it down. You want someone to drink? No. Coke or anything? Oh, I'm just upset. You what? You're a little upset? Yeah, I don't blame you. Listen, uh, I've seen many a man go to jail and end up dying there. <sighs> what I'm trying to do is make you realize, in my experience, okay, if you end up cooperating, it will be a lot better for you. I'm giving you an out here. I'm giving you the opportunity to help yourself. If I talk, I can walk out here tonight. If I talk, I can walk out here tonight. Tell us what you know. I was on the road, but I happened to see that. I ain't gonna lie. Stanley hurt that woman. Tell me what happened, Mr. Jackson. Well, uh, John was kind of weak, and he persuaded his uh, mom, he needed some money. John? He's putting it on John? So John goes over and knocks on the door. Yes. Okay, and then what happened? She uh, was arguing with him. She didn't want to let him in. Okay. You know, the time it was. It okay. wasn't late. And well, Stanley kicked that door. Where were you at? I was right there on the side of the road. On the side of the road. Was you standing there or sitting in your car? in the car. So they went into the living room and in, in the kitchen, you say? I want to say it's a kitchen, it's a place to eat. You can see everything from that corner down the street. He's got the x-ray vision. John, she kept saying, why are you doing this? She said, you know I don't want you, you know, she was talking to him. There you go, there you go. Renwick is talking all about John and Stanley and how they got to the house and how he heard it all and he saw it all, but he was across the street and he wasn't involved. And the more he talked, the more he dug his own hole because there's no way he could see and hear all those things from the position that he said he was in. Freddy's out. We need to get some cleared up, okay? We know that she was placing your car. And we know that she was placing your car because you end up taking it to a car wash and trying to get it cleaned up. Am I right, Mr. Jackson? Am I right? Not all the way. Okay, right. what do you mean that all the way? When Stanley got there and they got the tussling, he grabbed that lady. John did ask me, but first they were trying to put her in that car. Put her in your car? They were trying to. Okay. Seriously. Okay. 
And I don't know. Okay. Did they get her in the car? They got to kind of sit her down. Okay, so they did get her in your car. That's the truth. Okay. So that's the reason you pressure wash the car on the inside, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. We just hit the jackpot. Renwick Jackson admitted that he was there when Miss Maddie was attacked at her house. He admitted that Stanley Mitchell and John Williams were there with him. And he finally admitted that the reason why he pressure washed his car is because they put Miss Maddie in his car. But he won't go any further than that. He won't admit that he killed her. He won't admit that he was inside her house. But the point is, he's now changed his story. He's admitted he was there. And that ought to be enough for the DA to believe there's probable cause to arrest Renwick for the murder of Miss Maddie. What you're telling me is he's saying he saw things that happened inside the house and where he put himself there. There's no way that could have happened. Yes, sir, that's correct. Go ahead and arrest you. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Man, great job, you two, on the interview. Super job. You don't give up. You don't give up on homicide. You know, you got to keep on trying. So at this time, you're under arrest for second degree murder and conspiracy to commit second degree murder. We want to tell you that Renwick Jackson has been arrested. And we feel very strongly that soon, they should be arresting Stanley Mitchell and probably your brother. Oh, God. And all the things that y'all thought about how um, your mom opened the door and how, how he got in, you were right. Right now, I'm just thinking about what her last moments must have been like. And it's hard to imagine that anybody would want to do that to her, especially her own son. It's been a lot of the last six and a half years. It's been, it's been a whole lot. I know. So thank you guys so much. <sighs> My mom would always tell us, when I'm gone, all you'll have left are your brothers and sisters. You have to forgive them. You have to forgive them and move forward. And if you can't lean on your brother or your sister, then you're in a really sad place. A few weeks later, John Williams was arrested in Tallahassee, Florida. He had an extradition hearing. He waived it, and he was brought back to Louisiana. Yeah, we could give me a ride up to my mother's house. Did you go to your mother's house? We went, yeah, we went to my mother's. And then the other car happened to pull in. It was a guy named Stanley Mitchell. I went up to my mother and knocked on the door, and my mother asked me, uh, John, uh, 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 she asked who it is. I said, John, she looked out the window, she saw me, and then, and she asked me, what you doing here today? Then Stanley and Remy rushed up there, and Stanley kicked the door open. Stanley began to hit my mother, and Remy began to hit my mother with his feet. And that was in the porch or in the living room? In the living room. And where were you at? I was standing up watching. Okay. Did you ever say anything to your memory or uh, Stanley about it beating your mother? No, because I was afraid they were going to do the same thing to me.